everybody. I think I'm getting myself put together here. It's a little hard. Anyway, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I know I gotta adjust this stuff, it's hard. I don't have anything to hook it to. I have to hook it. I don't know where to hook it. I need help. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you had a thank happy Thanksgiving, and here we are again with um, Spirit Jam. And our theme tonight is uh, celebrating community, and you have become part of our community in the Spirit Jam. Uh, and I know you belong to other communities as well, and that's the theme of the evening. So as you enter into the Spirit Jam, please let us know you're here. Greet the people that you know, and tell us where you're playing from. We have people that will be joining us from other states and other communities around Michigan. And it's always nice to know um, where you're joining us from. Some people travel down south in the winter, and they may be joining us from Alabama or Texas or, or Florida. Anyway, let us know where you are at and um, greet each other in, this, in the spirit of community. Uh, we did have some new people join Spirit Jam in the last, and if they're on tonight, uh, do say hi to Lois Showers, Margie Bowman, Dan and Pam Kreutzer, Barbara Silverberg, and Mary Jean Turnquist. So they have become members of Spirit Jam, and we're glad that they're part of it. If it's your first time here, or if you've been with us since the very beginning, you know how we sort of have a theme every time. And, and then I weave the music into that theme. So it's not a jam in the sense of an in-person jam, but we had to adapt to this. But the purpose of Spirit Jam originally was to keep the feeling of the music community going in the depths of the pandemic and, and expand that sense of community. And it certainly has done that. In the last year, we have been able to jam in person with people that before we only played with in the Spirit Jam, and it was really fun to meet them and get to know them a little bit. This is, of course, sponsored by Silver Strings Dulcimer Society, and um, they always start every jam with Westphalia Waltz, which is the club song. So let's play it. We're going to play it um, three times. Here we go.
time has gone this year, but it has gone by really fast. I think because we were all out and busy doing things, here we are already to December, and I just can't believe it. We did a lot this year. We were at three festivals. We had four Thanksgivings. The first Thanksgiving was on Thanksgiving Day, and Terry and I served at a community dinner um, the, our church puts on. How did you spend your Thanksgiving? And was there a special dish that your family always has at Thanksgiving? Mm. We had, for our first Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, we had the traditional dishes. Terry, what did you serve? I served uh, green bean casserole. He was the green bean casserole man. I was the gravy girl. And I want to tell you, people love gravy. And they're very particular about how you serve it. So we did that, and the time is ticking by. So let's do TikTok polka while you think about what your um, favorite Thanksgiving dish is, whether it's the side. What I found is that people really aren't that crazy about turkey. It's all the rest of it that they like. And how many times are we doing this? We are doing this four times. It's in the key of G.
Okay. All right. So next tune we're going to be playing is Angelina the Baker. And there's um, certain people in every family or every group who has is noted for a certain recipe. They always bring a certain dish. For some of them, it might be the only thing they know how to cook. But for others, it's because they're just great cooks. And in our family, our son-in-law, Roy, makes the best bread. Oh, my gosh. So if we get invited to dinner and it's a special dinner, you can count on him to make, uh, like, French bread. It's really great. And then there was another lady who was really known for her pies. In our church, her name was Rose, and she actually gave a class on how to, to bake the best apple pies. And at the she donated pies to an auction, and her pies always got like $100 a pie because they were so good. So who's, who bakes what or makes what in your family that you associate the food with a certain person? And we'll play Angeline the Baker. And Angeline the Baker, actually, what she was known for was baking biscuits. So Angeline the Baker, we're playing that four times, and it's in the key of D. Growing up, um, a lot of people, the churches were the center of community, and there were various churches in my little town and in most little towns, and um, churches were not only the center of community within the fabric of that church, but they also were the uh, timekeepers. The bells would go off at certain times every week. You could count on them, and even when we went to college, the, there was a bell tower it rang every quarter of the hour, didn't it, Terry? Yes, it did. And it got to where you wouldn't hear it because it was kind of like an alarm clock or a train uh, that would go by. But when you first got there, it was like, oh, the bell's ringing, and i got to get to class. So this next tune, the Bells of St. Mary, remind us of our church communities, our faith communities. And um, so did the bells ring in your church? And if they did, um, did you have a pretty good, we heard some, we were just on a trip to Italy and the bells ring over there all the time, everywhere. We heard the bells ringing and I'd look at my watch and think, oh, 
I don't know where I was going, but I looked to see if their, their bells were on time. And there was one church that had the worst sounding bells I've ever heard. But the rest of them were rather pretty. So let's play Bells of St. Mary three times. And um, it's in the key of G. is by Dee Dee Tibbetts, and Dee Dee Tibbetts has given us permission to play this tune. It's called Bryson Hall Waltz, and she went to a Swanandoa um, College, I guess it's college, and, and took classes there, and Bryson Hall was where they had the dances, and so she wrote this in fond memory of the her time there in that school and enjoying the music and learning things, and really, there's a big community when you go to school, whether it's going to um, a shokan or any type of classes to play better music, but even when you were in school growing up. So the next couple tunes have to do with communities at schools and what it was like when we went to school and what it's like for the generations prior to us and after us. There's a thread, and we all talk about our alma mater. Where did you go to school and who were who were the kids in your community? As we play Bryson Hall Waltz three times, it's in the key of G. This one is a little bit tricky, I think, but it's a beautiful waltz. And I really do thank Dee Dee for letting us uh, play her tune.
Oh, I really like that. I was introduced to it uh, quite a number of years ago, and I think it was played at like probably the first uh, Silver Strings picnic that Terry and I ever went to. And that's when the, what I associate this with. And we were all working on it that summer. So anyway, back to school. This next tune is a tune, uh, again, used by permission from Brian Pakel, called The Last Day of School. And the last day of school varies depending on where, what part of the country you are in. But there's always a, re, a sense of release from the daily schoolwork into the promise of summer. And then, of course, all parents and a lot of kids are always ready to go back to school come fall. Our kids, our, our youngest is still in school, but our, our older ones, our grandkids, are in college now. And... Now it doesn't. It takes longer than four years a lot of times to get through college. So continue talking about school and your community, and wh where you've met various people that ended up being part of your lifetime community of friends. Uh, all right, this is. Uh, what are we playing this, Terry? Four times. It's in the key of D. No, it's D. What? Okay. Okay. I think he was really ready, whoever this student was, to shuck everything and get on home to play in the summer. The next couple tunes are about our community with our home Mother Earth and all the creatures that we share this planet with. And in Michigan, um, we have chickadees. And if you go to a Kensington Park, which is in the southeast part of Michigan, a lot of trails are there. People go to feed the birds, and the chickadees leap right out of your hands. And this tune was written by Lynn Ellen Kaiser, who has given us the club permission to use it. And it was a tune of the month, and it has the syncopation, but it also imitates the sound of the chickadee. And they taught it at our our um, 
Kelly and, and Lynn Ellen taught it at our camp out this last summer. And the people liked it. And one of the people was practicing it at her campsite. And a bird came down to listen to her play. And it was just like an affirmation of our community with the nature around us. So Chickadee Reel, and we're playing it um, four times. We'll do it a little bit slower because there is some syncopation to it. At least twice, and then maybe we'll speed it up. It's in the key of D four times. I don't know. I was thinking, was that three or four? Uh, I was too busy thinking about something else, which is always an issue. All right. So the <laughs> sometimes we feel most at home when we're out. At, and I know a lot of the people in our music community love to camp and, and camp by the shores and play music. And everywhere we have ever camped, we take our instruments and we play. And everywhere we've gone... We have drawn people to listen to the music, and sometimes it's the birds. We had a, um, a, a, a jam at Linda Osgood's last, a couple of years ago, one of our pop-up jams, and this tree, must have been 500 starlings in it, but they played the whole south wind with us. So we're connected to the community of nature, and this next tune, um, the the person that wrote the words to it was Folly at Pierpoint. It was written in 1864, and the music was by uh, Conrad Co Kocher. But it's all about the beauty of the earth. You know, it goes for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. And it ends always with raising grateful praise. You know, it goes for the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. And the next verse is for the joy of ear and eye and for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, 
linking sense to sound and sight. And that's what I think music does. So we're going to play this four times. It's in the key of G. And the reason we're going to play it four times is that I had parts. Um, so there's a harmony part and a disc descant part to it. So while I'm playing the melody, we're going to play it four times. So the first time, play the melody, and the second time, pick a different part, the third time, pick a different part, and then come back and play the melody with me. And let's do this. So what is the most beautiful place on earth that you've been? That's the question. So everybody starts out with community at a young age. This picture is a, a print of a, it's a, a French artist. There's pictures of his in the Detroit Institute of Arts. But it made me think of the nature and the mother and the child. And she's probably, I don't know what she's talking to this little baby about. But um, they're from someplace, like you are from someplace and we're from someplace. Terry and I are both from small towns. But this next tune, Detroit Shadish, is also sort of at a variation, and I'm not sure if this is the chicken or the egg of Flop-Eared Mule, but the Detroit Shadish has more parts. But we're only playing the part A and B. And uh, where are you from, and what kind of a community was it? Was it a farming community? Was it a suburb? Was it a city? And what was... There, what was there about special about your community? We're going to play this in the key of D, and uh, we end on the A part, so it's three and a half times.
And I think my next question would be, that was where you grew up, and where do you live now? We had a discussion at like our fourth Thanksgiving thing about the small towns that we live in, and this one fellow has never lived more than two, two miles from where he was born. In fact, some of you may know him, Larry, Larry Roper. Now, Terry and I have lived in a lot of different places. How about you? Where do you live right now? And this, we live in Plymouth now, and it's the longest we've lived anywhere. So, all right, so the joys of Quebec. What are the joys of where you live? Is there a festival? Do you live in Everett or Midland? Or, you know, we have um, festivals here in Plymouth. I never get to go to the art one, which I would love to, but that's whenever it is. So anyway, the, the joys that come in your community. Let's talk about that, and let's play the joys of Quebec. And this is in the key of A, and we are playing it three times. I was thinking about Shirley Kaiser, who's been a really big part of my music community when I started with Silver Strings. And this was one that she told me was really like a number one jam tune sometime. And, and we always called it quite often. So Shirley, if you're watching tonight, we played it just for you. So I hope you were, are here. All right. So when you go uptown in Plymouth, there are a lot of restaurants, and there's this lovely park, and there's a gathering place where they have farmer's markets, and we play sometimes there in the summer, and they have an old theater, the Penn Theater, and it's a lovely little uptown place to stroll around and stop for coffee at the Co Plymouth Coffee Bean, and um, it's a nice place to play in the summer, and we play, uh, when we play, we get an audience, and there's a certain fellow that likes to dance to our music. So if I were going to go uptown in your town, what, where would you take me? And do I bring my instrument? Okay, so let's play going uptown, how many times? Four times, and it's in the key of D. Let me hope I can play this. I haven't played it very many times, but it fit the theme, so I'm putting on my big girl pants to play it.
Did you notice I got better at that by the fourth time I about had it? That's the thing when you're learning a new tone. Tune and you're playing in a jam. You've got to play it more than three times. Okay, Harvest Home. This is the time we gather together and celebrate the harvest and, and look forward to all and express gratitude for our blessings and everything. So who did you celebrate Thanksgiving with? I told you we already, the first one was at our church. The second one was a Friendsgiving with several friends. And that was a different menu, very good. And the third one was our actual family. And which is growing because the grandkids are now having significant others. And the fourth one was at a Mexican restaurant. So we had a, quite a variety. But let's play Harvest Home and um, who did you spend your Thanksgiving with? And what are you grateful for this year? You know, we, we, we come to the end of the year and we look back before we look forward to next year. So... Let's consider that. All right. Next is turkey in the straw, and I don't know how much weight did you put on with these Thanksgiving dinners. We're watching our weight. I, yeah, we're watching. We're watching. <laughs> uh, turkey in the straw and the Kia D. How many times are we doing this? Three times.
All right, communities are made up of people of all ages, some young and some old, and, and um, some are, you know, quite the characters. Every community has a few characters of one sort or another. So in your community, in your family, or maybe your music community, who is the eldest or the wise elder that people have the, a memory of the history of that community? Uh, Silver Strings will be celebrate its 40th anniversary next year. And we have people, I don't, that have been in the club a long time and people that are new. And it really is up to the elders to carry the family stories along. So we're going to play old Joe Clark. I'm not sure how old Joe Clark was, but in my family, my immediate family, I am the only elder there is. So... How about your family? Let's think about that. Okay, old Joe Clark four times, and it's, you know what key it's in. One of the members, Mary, I don't know if Mary's with us tonight, but Mary, we played old man and old woman in one of the previous jams, uh, spirit jams, and she loved this tune because she and her husband used to call him old, they call each other old man or old woman. And the first A part, you can hear them talking. It's a dialogue. And he's in the lower voice and she's in the upper. But whatever they talk about, they come to some agreement. And then they, the second part to me, they're dancing together. So um, it's the old man and old woman. Key of G, and we're doing it four times.
right, let's talk about the young people in our family. I have noticed on Facebook, Stan Dykema's little grand granddaughter, I think, and, and Charlotte has her first grandson, and, and it's just delightful when we have young people joining the family. They're so much fun to watch. One of the people in our church is a grandmother for the first time, and love just love. That's the personification of love. So let's play young Jane and, and tell me who was the youngest person at your family gatherings. The youngest person at ours was freshman in college. So 19. That makes me old. All right. Young Jane. we watch kids grow up and some people, some of them have a rough time of it and it's certainly Roddy McCorley did so let's play Roddy McCorley uh, his family must have been very sad with what happened to him but anyway we'll play it four times it's in the key of D and we'll speed up a little bit the second or the third and fourth time
So, when there's a pair of lovers, generally speaking, if they get married, then somehow or the family increases. But you first have to fall in love, and this is Lover's Waltz by Jay Unger and Molly Mason, who have given us permission uh, to play it uh, in this venue and this on this media. So we're going to play Lover's Waltz three times. It's in the key of D, and it's one of Silver String's very favorite. It gets played quite a bit at our jams. So it's part of the music of our community. So these young lovers were ready to have a wedding. And the next tune they're going to play is Haste to the Wedding. And weddings are community celebrations where two different communities join together and become interconnected. So Haste to the Wedding. And I think this was has been heard in some movies in the background, but I can't remember which ones. So we become blended communities through weddings and other things. Haste to the Wedding, and we're playing it um, four times because I don't think it's real familiar to everybody. That's key of D. Oh, Key of D. Thanks, Terry.
One more time. So the next thing that happens is pretty soon there's kids. And this next tune, Walking Bronwyn, uh, which was written by Pat Tate, who is one of the original members of the Silver Strings community, uh, wrote this song for her first grandchild. Well, I don't know if it was her first, but one of her grandchildren, Bronwyn. And it's called Walking Bronwyn. And any of you that have had grandchildren know they grow up so darn fast. And pretty soon they're toddling along, and the next thing they're graduating from college. It's mind-boggling. And we never get older ourselves, you know, except that if we are running behind toddlers now, we're huffing and puffing. All right, walking Bronwyn, it's in the key of G, and we're going to do it four times. And just picture yourself chasing a little two-year-old. I don't know if that one's walking yet or not, but... Okay, the, the next tune reminds me that uh, how, how do communities form? Sometimes they're just formed because that's your family. Uh, Regina, who's one of our members, said she has a community that she belongs to that goes back hundreds of years, which is remarkable. It's really remarkable. And we have different communities that we belong to. We belong to a dance. You might sing in the choir. You might play in the church. You might belong to... Um, Terry belongs to an archery club that's a community. And, you know, there's flying clubs. There are people that are in all sorts of different hobbies and interests. 
So the next tune is just to remind us of all of the things that can become an activity or an interest that be can become a community if you join it. Um, so what other communities are you part of? And let's play this three and a half times. It's called Come Dance and Sing. Summer, this summer we got to meet people at the Kentucky Music Festival and at Everett and at Midland. And each of those festivals is a community of sorts. People go year after year, they greet old friends, they play and jam together, they join in new jams, they meet old people and join in jams with people they've done for years. And Festival Rag is by Bill Robinson, and he gave Silver Strings permission to do this a long time ago. He's always been at Everett, I think just about every single year that I've been there. And he wrote this song, but he always plays on stage, and it's called Bill Robinson and Friends. And when we have our Silver Strings jam, it's the Silver Strings and Friends. They're always open for somebody to join. And I think that speaks to the openness of community. So let's pay, play Festival Rag three times. It's in the key of D.
The next tune, High Clouds, is written by David Kainer. He wrote a lot of music, and he was a great friend in the dulcimer world, and he wrote music that's played all over the country. So we're all connected to each other through music. This tune's called High Clouds. It's a, it's a lovely waltz, and um, David died from ALS last year. And so we're really lucky that he left this legacy of music. All right, so three, uh, what are you playing this? Three times? Yeah, three times. Well, we're getting to the end, and um, we've had a nice time tonight. I hope you have enjoyed playing. It's nice to have you back. It's nice to be back. We'll be back through the winter months when it's cold, and I don't know what the next date is, but do watch. It'll be posted and uh, with another theme, and I'll get the playlist out, and we'll join as a community again um, in just a very different way. And hopefully next summer... We'll get to play in person again, and I'll, Terry and I will get to meet more of you. So it was, really was a joy. It was a little disconcerting, I have to say. Some of these festivals, and they go by, and they say, Hi, Marcia, and you think, okay. And then you realize who they are, and it's, it's, it's just terrific to feel we're so connected across wide distances. So the parting glass is um, when we lift a glass and toast to each other, and have one for the road. So let's have one for the road and uh, play this one three times. Let me start that again.
the end. And it's been nice to see you back. It's nice to be back. Oh, Terry got all of this set up. It takes us a while, you know, to be, things get put places, and then you got to find them again. And then you got to remember how you set it up, and then you got to, between the two of us, we manage more him than me. All right, Amazing Grace. We'll play it four times. And the last time, you can sing. Nobody will hear you. So just enjoy the words and, and sing with that. It's a great song. of the night and we will be seeing each other soon again and please do make comments and invite other friends to join us the next time it's an open jam and be a happy part of whatever community you belong to until again have a great holiday bye